Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I like to nerd out to the science behind how we can keep our houseplants happy and to multiply them in our home. So if you're into that kind of content, please do subscribe to my channel and send me likes. So this uh, Dracaena Twister actually prompted today's video. I've been wanting to do pest videos for a long time, but I just couldn't get to it. So today, I guess we're just gonna cover mealy bugs. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you what happened to this guy. Uh, basically, it looked a lot happier and uh, more erect uh, before. And I just walked by it one day because I neglect my Dracaenas, and I noticed that it was droopy. Uh, so I looked up close and sure enough, there were a lot of mealybugs on it. They're having a, a massive party. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you another plant, a croton that I treated last week for uh, mealybugs that is doing well. So we have a croton here in my balcony that uh, last week suddenly drooped like crazy. I don't know what was wrong with it because I've had him for a while and he was growing happily for me for a while. And I looked under the leaves and surprisingly it was covered in mealybugs. Um, and uh, let me see. I actually didn't, yeah, that's a bad one. I actually didn't wash this off because I wanted to show you guys. Uh, so this is the carcass of the mealybug. I sprayed them down a week ago with my, um, with the solution that I'm gonna show you in a bit. And uh, this plant started perking back up again. So I'm actually going to uh, clean off the mealybugs uh, on this plant as soon as after I finish this video. I'm actually gonna spray it down one more time because you should spray down, uh, you should break the life cycle of the mealybugs. Um, so yeah, and then maybe I will clean off again the leaves uh, in a bit. So mealybugs are actually very, very slow moving pests. Uh, you can't really see them moving with your naked eyes. And how they got to your plants is quite interesting actually. Usually ants put them there. They have a symbiotic relationship in nature. They are BFFs. So basically what happens is the ants would protect them. They would put them uh, uh, up to the spots and they would eat the, the sugars from the plants and then they would poop, and their poop would be sugar for the plant, for, for the ants. Um, actually, one time I was uh, lifting up one, a pot, and then I was really horrified to see that on the underside of the pot, there was a lot, like a nest of ants and mealybugs. They were actually mealybug babies. The ants were actually harvesting the, the mealybugs. That's a pretty freaky scene to see. So yeah, uh, mealybugs will actually cause your plants to decimate. It will uh, cause them to droop, and you will see visible signs of stress. Um, they can live uh, on the top of the soil on your leaves uh, and you can see them, they're usually white specks although I've seen yellow colored uh, mealybugs with like red heads, super funky looking. Um, yeah, they, they usually live on the top of the soil but they can also live in the soil. This is uh, more difficult to get rid of. I have a philodendron varicosum like over there, I can see you right now. Uh, and when I was, I'm, it wasn't growing much at all for me and I was just couldn't figure out what's wrong with it. So I lifted it out of this pot, and uh, surely enough, there were mealybugs clinging onto the roots. So sometimes they do live in the roots of uh, plants. So one way you can um, notice them is if you see them in decline, do check the foliage and, and then the, the roots where possible. Um, if the mealybugs are in the roots, actually, what you can do is do a neem oil soil drench. So I'm about to show you my neem oil solution that I've worked with. You can actually make a big batch of that and just pour it into your pot, just water your plant, saturate th thoroughly, and it will kill any of the mealybugs that are in there. Uh, alternately, you can also use um, this chemical fertilizer, I think it's called Furadan that I use. So, did I say fertilizer or pesticide? I don't know, <laughs> but it's a pesticide, sorry, I, it's like late in the day. Uh, so yeah, you would sprinkle the, the Furadan, the uh, chemical fur pesticide on top of the soil, and as you water it or as it gets rained on, the, the, the chemicals will kill not just uh, mealybugs, but many other pests that live in your soil. So. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how I mix up my uh, pesticide solution. So the first thing that you wanna add is uh, any kind of soap. I just tend to use this one because it says powered by plants. <laughs> I don't know if that helps, but uh, it's supposed to be free, free or clear of certain chemicals or, or fragrances or dyes. So I'm just gonna add like, like a dash. And the way that you want the reason why you want to add soap is actually to 
as an emulsifier because you're about to add uh, neem oil over here which doesn't mix with water so if you're only mixing neem, neem oil in water it's gonna separate it's never gonna mix well um, and I've never actually measured any of my uh, mixes so I just kind of eyeball it like, like that much like a little pour uh, neem oil smells really really bad by the way and then uh, the next thing that I'm gonna add is uh, optional, this is actually a chemical uh, insecticide. Uh, this is the brand name, not advertised by the way. Uh, and I just add a few drops. This smells really bad too. And uh, actually you would want to wear goggles and gloves when you handle this because you don't want to get it in your eyes. So I just put about, I'll sit, uh, I call it about 10 drops. I dilute everything. I don't believe in yeah, using any full strength of anything. And so far, this solution has worked really well for me. So I'm add some water. Not too full. Uh, close the bottle. Any, any bottle or any bottle will work for this. So you want to give it a good shake. Okay, and then uh, spray bottle. Uh, neem oil should only be applied during the evening, uh, right before sundown, because it's photosensitive, just like a lot of essential oils, like your citrus essential oils and your cinnamon and your rosehip oil, these are all photosensitive. You don't want to put that on your skin um, because it will uh, give you um, a bad reaction when it's in combination with sunlight. And then, uh, now that it's in here, I just want to keep adding water. And you're all set. This is actually the solution that you're gonna spray down uh, your plant with. And I wanna remind you guys to have your goggles and your glove. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray, spray it down like really well. Uh, again, it's about uh, 4.30 p.m. So the sun is, is coming down. It's not gonna get any photosensitive issues. Uh, I'm just gonna really spray it down. Um, Make sure that you get the underside, get all the leaves. And then when you're done, um, this is actually in a cover pot. Let me get it out of the pot. Yeah, you can just hear them screaming and dying in there. And in my experience, after you spray them down, they recover and they perk up like within a week. And it feels so amazing just when you see your plants perk back up again from a, a pest attack. Secretly, I kind of I kind of enjoy working with pests because of that. I know it's a sick idea. But trust me, you guys, uh, if you uh, have faith in your uh, pest treatment and you follow through with it, you're going to have a lot of success and your plants are going to be happy. OK, so I'm done. I'm just going to leave it alone for now. And uh, normally I have leftover uh, uh, pest spray or whatever you call this, uh, neem oil solution. I would always spray it uh, in my other plant just to finish up the, the bottle. And usually I go with for the alocasias first because especially the underside of the alocasias because they are very, very spider mite prone. And this Zabrina has gotten so many spider mites. It gets it every month, I would say. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead and spray it down. Uh, yeah, and I've got a few more alocasias here. They're usually the culprit for spider mites. Um, I will cover spider mites in another video. <laughs> so I'm filming with one hand, I'm trying to, and get all of the undersides as well. So yeah, you get the point. And another thing about mealybugs is that they love Hoyas. They love them so much, they don't know what to do. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I, ever since I moved my Hoyas outdoor, I don't really see them. They tend to like to congregate around Hoyas that are indoors for some reason. So if you see um, white specks on your Hoyas, go ahead and treat them right away. Yeah, I don't see any here. 
And another telltale sign for uh, millibugs, and I'm so sorry I don't have that many millibugs right now to show you guys, is that sometimes you will see ants crawling around the plant, and the ants will lead you to the millibugs. All right, so I hope that I helped you gain confidence in taking care of your mealy bug problems and that I covered almost everything I know about them. Uh, meanwhile, do take care and stay safe and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.